And good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. It's Calvina here, your inspirational speaker and teacher here with you this Saturday, Saturday night live, Saturday evening live. Um, it is November 14th and it is about 5.03 p.m. Central Standard Time. Good evening again. Bear with me as I try to straighten out that light a little bit. Yeah, I guess it's going to have to do. I guess it's going to have to do because if I look into it, I will be blind. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't fix it too much now. But welcome, welcome, welcome everybody that's coming uh, that's coming on live. Make sure that you share that this message is going on live right now. Share, do your watch parties, do your likes, tag some people that you think could benefit uh, from the message on tonight, which we're going to be talking about. It's not what you know, but it's who you know. It's not what you know, but it's who you know. I know we've heard that expression many, many times in our lifetime, but it is true <laughs> it is true it is not what you know but who you know we're going to talk a little bit more about the truth of that statement so share the message also um as we're going through the message please make sure that you take the time to you know interact do your likes comment if you want to shoot a good amen going on uh, i can definitely appreciate the feedback and also the interaction it's it's encouraging it's encouraging as um i encourage you you encourage me how about that that's a, that's a good thing so we are going to give it a few minutes not even that long we're going to give it about a minute for others to join in live with us right now to let uh Everyone knows for everybody to let everybody know that it's going on live right now. Okay, so we're just going to give it a few minutes. I just said a few minutes, but I don't really mean that. I mean a few seconds, a few seconds. I hope every day, everybody had a good day, having a good day. It's still early yet, but here, like I said, it's around, it's a little bit after five and it is dark outside, so... I really don't like this season change in that uh, it gets dark too soon. It gets dark so fast. All right, I'm going to give people 60 seconds or so to get signed in here. So thank you all for joining me live. Appreciate you for those who are jumping on live. Hey, 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 I'm saying hey now, hey now. Get my, my unparchedness going on here few more seconds everybody we're just giving people time to jump on for those who are jumping on now and wondering why we are not going forth it is because of that i am giving people time to jump on <clears throat> Hello, hello, hello everyone as you're coming on live. Thank you, thank you. Share the message, do your watch parties, all of that lovely stuff. Tag some people, tag some folks that you love. Tag some enemies. <laughs> um, silence my phone, I forgot to do not disturb it. So now I'm getting text messages, I'm getting phone rings and all of that right now, of course. <laughs> ah, I forgot to do not disturb it started now get started now so again we're talking about it's not what you know but it's who you know it's not what you know but it is who you know and as i mentioned already time and time again i know i've heard it before especially as it pertains to corporate america you know, it's important to know people, not necessarily what you know gets you promoted, but it's who you know that gets you promoted. So I, I've heard that in that realm, in that in that uh, area of life more so. But I want us to know as well, in the spiritual, yes, it is so important, just the same. It is not what you know, but it is who you know. And I want us to take hold of this scripture, John 14, verse 1. So it's John chapter 14, verse 1 where he says this, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So that's the anchor scripture of this encouragement on tonight. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So I, I, I wanna stop where it says you believe in God. 
And of course, Jesus is speaking here. He said, you believe also in me. But the point is this. We don't have to. Actually, not only do we not have to. Jesus instructs us. Don't let our hearts be troubled. He's telling us, don't let it happen. Why? Because you believe in God. <laughs> the end. Period. Turn the camera off. We're done. Do not let your hearts be troubled. How many of us have had troubled hearts as of late? Any of us have had troubled hearts? I, I, I can say that I've had, I've had some, some, some heart trouble as of late. You know, the conditions of the communities, the conditions of the world, the conditions of, of our nation, uh, a certain um, private matter. See, has our hearts troubled sometimes? That can happen. Things that we're going through in life can have our hearts troubled. But God, Jesus himself is encouraging us to not allow that. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. So it is imperative for all of us to know who God is. Why is that imperative? Because once we know the essence, the truth of who God is, our hearts are less likely to be troubled. Our heart, that's how he could sandwich those two statements together. Our hearts are less likely to be troubled when we learn and when we experience the truth of who God is to us. So it's essential. We talk about, you hear that term going on around, uh, that term going around a lot, essential. You know, you got essential workers and God bless the essential workers and our, and our medical teams and things that are out there working hard on the front lines and, uh, you know, all of those um, that are out there, essential workers. But I want to tell us uh, another thing that's essential is knowing who God is, especially in a time like this. And, and really, I shouldn't even say especially in a time like this, because it's essential to know who God is, period. When things are going right, according to us, and also when things aren't going so right, according to us, it's essential to know who God is. Why? Again, so that our hearts are less likely to be troubled. Scripture also tells us, don't be anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, make our requests known unto God. So it's about God and our relationship with him that allows us to be less anxious and allows our hearts to be less troubled. So let me ask us all a question here on, on Facebook Live on tonight. Who are, who, who are we relying on? Hmm. Or, or what are we relying on? Who or what are we relying on? And I had to check myself. It, it was a few days ago or so, especially as I was preparing for this exhortation, that I had to repent. Hmm, my God, my God. I had to repent because I, 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 I was um, in, uh, enlightened. My, 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 my knowledge was more so expanded. I had some revelation on who or what I had been relying on. And I had to repent and tell God, I'm sorry, because, you know, prior to COVID-19 hitting the nation, prior to um, the presidential election and all the political um, stuff that's going on, prior to all of the, um, you know, all of the, the attention on, um, you know, the, the racial un injustices and unrest and things like that, I had unknowingly, unconsciously been relying on the normalcy of, 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 of everyday life, so to speak. So I, I, without really knowing, you know, I was relying on things being normal, you know, I, I, I really thought, you know, we here in the country, we had it going on in the United States, you know, we're a first world country, you know, we, we pretty much got, got what we want going on. Um, you know, I, I, we didn't have to worry about much, you know, we get up and go to work. That was the thing. Uh, you come home, you pay your bills, you do all of those things. All of those things was, was normal. And, 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 and I had gotten used to that. And that was kind of, you know, like, okay, that's, that's kind of what I, rely, I relied on the normalcy of, of, of what things were, you know, and God is using this season 
and it, for me, you know, and, I, and I'm sure he's showing all of us different things, different aspects. Uh, but using this season for me to show all of my trust should be in him. All of my reliance should be in him and, and, and on him. Because it's only by him that I am able to live, move, and have my being. It's not because uh, the, the presidents were doing so well. And I'm not talking about our current. I'm not bashing anybody or nothing like that. I'm talking about all of my life, you know, uh, all of my adult life, at least when I was paying attention to it, at least. Um, you know, it wasn't just it wasn't because the presidents were, were so brilliant that things were going well. It wasn't uh, because the um, our medical uh, folks out there was just so brilliant that we were un we were able to be safe from any type of pandemic. It wasn't because of anything that anybody, any man d did or is doing. It's all through the grace of God, hallelujah, that we live, we move, we have our being, that we're provided for, that uh, uh, things are good. It's because of him. And we, and like I said, I had to repent myself because it was kind of like, my goodness, wow. <laughs> my goodness, I, 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 I didn't know that I was really kind of just relying on the normalcy of how things were, you know, expecting things just to be the way they were. And now that things are not, it's like, wow, thank you, Lord, for that revelation. But it still goes back to not letting our hearts be troubled because if we believe in God, we believe in God. And, and, and God is our source and he is who keeps our hearts less troubled because there was a see there's times where I, I, I can I can get troubled not knowing because me if anybody is like me you know I like control I like order I like to know what's next what's about to happen and boy if we all know now, we don't know nothing. We don't know what's about to happen. We don't know what's going on. But the hope is that we don't have to know so long as we know the one who does know. So it's not about what we know. It's about who we know. Because I, I, I don't know what's going on from one day to the next. But I know God and he knows. And I know that he's a keeper. And I know that he will never leave me nor forsake me. I know those things. <laughs> so it's not about what we know, but it's about who we know. And along that line, we got some scriptural examples to help back us up, to help encourage us, to help give us some, some Holy Ghost examples as to how we should approach this life about, it's about who we know and not about what we know. So the first is going to come from our uh, our young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, coming from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. And I'm reading the NIV. So it says this here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Verse 17, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able Ooh, I love it, is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. <laughs> 18, but even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. All right, let me tell you all about a little bit what's going on right here, right here, right here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, young men, young men that was actually uh, taken into the king's court. They were chosen Israelites to come into the king's court uh, to be treated special along with Daniel. And they were going to train them and, and, and this and that. But the long and short of it, they were chosen by king and, and, and king uh, liked them, <laughs> so to speak. And so King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, up on his high horse, He's setting up golden images. He's telling everybody in his nation that they have to worship his gods and, 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 you know, basically bow down to them. Okay. Now, again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego know the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Okay. And, and they're like, um, no, sir, um, we're not going to do that. So 
what ended up happening was somebody went back and reported to the king like, uh, you know, you had set up this, this, this decree that, you know, when um, the, the music sounds, the lyres and the, and the zithers and, the, and all of those music instruments sound that everybody is supposed to bow down to the image, you know, how you set that up, king. Well, let us tell you about these three. They said, nah, they're not going to do that, though. They said they're not doing that. And he, uh, king got beside himself. Say, what? He, they, 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 they not going to what? And um, so, oh, bring them here. Mm -hmm. Come on, bring them hither. So let's have a conversation about this. So King asked them, what? What What do you mean you're not going to be bowing down? This is the decree I made for the nation. I said, this is what's got to happen. This is what happens. <laughs> if you don't, and anybody else who does not, they will be thrown into a furnace, fire, blazing. You're going to get boinked up if you don't do what I say do. So this is where the scene is. And the boys or the young men, I should say, they responded to Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Um, but we don't need to defend ourselves in this matter. <laughs> I, love that. I, just, I just love it because they just like real smooth with it. They said, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the furnace... <laughs> The God we serve is able to deliver us from it. My God's able to deliver. And, and, and guess what? And like I said, I ain't got to defend myself. However, even if he doesn't deliver me out of it or deliver us out of it, we want you to know, your majesty, they were still respectful, <laughs> that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. I am so loving the scripture as it pertains to it's not what you know. But it's who you know. <laughs> it, these boys, these young men, they were educated for one. Okay, so they, 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 they had some smarts. They were knowledgeable. Uh, uh, um, you know, they, they, they were well read. They, 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 were, they weren't silly. So they weren't followers of people, obviously, right? They didn't just do what they were told. They were educated. Again, they were chosen. They were favored. And they were promoted by this king. So, you know, you, you would think, okay, they would be like, all right, well, you know, we better do what he say because, you know, he did, you know, bring us up here, you know, treating us well, you know, we're doing, you know, you would think that they would might have a little compromise in them. But my God, they did not because it's who they knew that, that gave them the courage, the Holy Ghost courage to say, no, sir, we are not bowing down. He, they have total trust. Hallelujah total trust and confidence in the God that they serve. Total trust and confidence. So much so that they said, my God is able to deliver me from this. <laughs> I trust that he'll deliver me from this. But with that, because I know that he knows more than I do, even if he does decide <laughs> to put me in there, I still ain't bound down. How about that? I'm still not bound. That is a total trust, reliance, I know who God is in my life. Can we speak to our circumstances? I mean, that was a horrible circumstance to be in. Are we able to speak to our circumstances similarly to the way that these three young men spoke to their circumstance? Their circumstance, they were about to get blinked up. They were in the, at the face of death, basically. And they said, I know my God way too well. Mm-mm. No, we ain't going, mm -mm, no, no compromise here. I, 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 we serve God. We know him. It's, I, I know what I see. I know that the fire, I see the smoke is ablazing. I know what you said you're going to do to us, King. But I know what God also said. And what he says trumps anything that you say. My God, my God. That is some confidence. That is some who I know type stuff. That is who I know. Are we able in the face of death, in the face of horrible circumstances, stand up and talk about who we know. Oh, that's good. That's a good example. That is a good example. So I appreciate this example from Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. And I encourage us all to read uh, the, the few chapters around there to kind of get a gist of the story and how it went. But it's a beautiful story and I love it. I, I'm not going to get, I was about to, but no, y'all go ahead and read that on your own as far as what happened thereafter, okay? I'm just trying to uh, set up some examples that, we, you know, we have people before us that have uh, that has, has really uh, stood on the, it's not what I know, 
<laughs> but it's who I know. So I'm going to go to Job. Now, we all, Job is a popular name in scripture. Job chapter 13, verse 15, where he says, though he slay me, <laughs> yet I will trust him. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. That's just the first half of that scripture, but I'm going to stop there. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So we, we, we are familiar with Job, but for those who may not be, I don't want to be over presumptuous. Job lost everything, but Job was a righteous man. Job, Job did no wrong. <laughs> and, 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 and God allowed some challenges to present themselves to Job. And um, there were some serious challenges where he lost his job, meaning his, his, his livestock, his wealth, he, he, he lost all of it. Job equivalent to, to, to our talk now. He lost all of his children. All of his children died. And he lost his health. Now, again, that's another book to read. Um, starting Start at Job at the, from the beginning and, and continue to read to hear the story of Job because it is quite intense. But... Here we are in chapter 13, verse 15, where he says, though he slay me, and he's talking about God, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So to the point unto death, like if, if God wanted to take my life, I still will trust him. Now, like I said, Job had some serious situations, some serious challenges come his way. And I, I'm just curious to know, in the face of adversity, in such a way that Job, uh, Job uh, suffered, you know, could we stand in that way when, when, when we don't know what's to come? I mean, like I said, Job was a righteous man. There was nothing that he did wrong to warrant all of what he lost. We know it was for purpose. We know what, you know, we know the backdrop behind it. However, him going through it, he didn't get it. He didn't know what in the world was going on. So it was kind of like, I don't know what's to come next. What else you going to take, God? You took all of those things, my, 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 my wealth. You took my, my children. You took my health. The only thing left is for me to die. So though he slay me, yet I will trust him. How many of us could, 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 could go to God in that way? Though you slay me, yet I will trust. That is total reliance on who God is. That means, look, you know better than me. <laughs> you know better than me. It might be better for me to go on and slip on up out of this age. And, 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 and it'd be better for me. You know, that's an understanding that you have in the spirit. God, I trust you with my very life. You know, when we say that, <laughs> I trust you with my life. We got to mean that thing because there are some times when we're not going to know why certain things are happening. There's some times we're not going to understand why certain things are happening. There's some times we don't know why the timing of things are like they are in our lives. We don't understand it, but God, we trust you with our very Life, We trust you with our very life, God. We give it all to you. We surrender all to you. You know how we sing that song? We surrender all. I surrender all. We worship. Do we surrender all? There's little pieces. There are little, little parts of us that we may be holding on to that God is trying to get us to surrender. He's creating situations. He's creating challenges. He's creating all of these things in order for us to turn our ear, turn our eye to him. Let us. Uh, uh, get us to know that it is him that we need, that it is him that we need to rely on, that it is him that we need to trust. We must surrender all. We must surrender all. Hallelujah. Even when we don't know what may come or what may go, but we know him. Praise God. Oh my God, that is something that I desire for all of us to get down in our spirit because it's so important, so important because we got to hold on to him. We got to hold on to him. He is the leader. He is our, he is our mainstay. He is God and he changes not. His word is what it is. It's not what we know. It's not these circumstances that we know to be crazy around us. It's not what we know, but it is who we know that matters. Again, I don't know what's going to happen one day to the next. I don't know. But I know God and I know that he's a keeper. I know that all that he does is for my good. Hallelujah. He does not seek to harm me. So I don't care about what's going on in the world. I know him. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be, not that I don't, y'all you, you know what I'm saying. I, it's not that I don't care about what's going on in the world. However, I'm not going to let it uh, trouble my heart. As John 14 and 1 says, do not let your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You believe in God. Oh, God. Come on, Holy Spirit. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe in God. You believe in God. One more scriptural example about it's not what we know, but it's who we know. We're going to go to 2 Kings. We're going to go to chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 15 through 16. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 16. And when the servant of man... Of, uh, excuse me. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Mm. I got to give you all a little bit of backdrop on this one. So what's going on is this is uh, Elisha, prophet Elisha. He's being pursued. Uh, he's being pursued by the Ar uh, Arameans, I believe. And um, they're after him because they believe that he's been uh, delivering information <laughs> to the opposing side. Uh, and so there's a war. OK, let me back up a little bit. There's a war going on. So Elisha was uh, being accused of delivering information to the other side uh, to give the other side <laughs> a bit of an advantage. So. They are now pursuing him for being, uh, uh, for, for what they thought, at least, for spilling all of their secrets to the other side. So now they're pursuing him. So they wake up the next morning and, and, and Elisha's servant goes outside and he walks outside and he see all of the armies of those who are after them standing, chariots everywhere. All, they're, they look like they're going to be overtaken. They're surrounded by all of these things. And so the servant says, oh my gosh, master, whoa, what shall we do now? <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then this is when Elisha said, hey, do not fear. Oh yes, do not fear for those who are with us. <laughs> Elisha is a man of God, a prophet of God. Let me make that clear. For those uh, who are with us are more than those who are with them. It's not about what you know. Hallelujah. 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 It's about who you know. Because when they walked outside that day, what they knew was that they were surrounded by the uh, by the armies. They looked like that they were going to be overtaken by the army. They were looked like that they might die at the hand of those who were after them. But that's what they knew. That's what they saw. That's what their senses gave them. However, but who they knew uh, came forth, who Elisha knew came forth and overcame what he knew in his mind and what he saw with his eyes. He said, do not fear. He talked to his servant. He said, do not fear. Hallelujah. You sometimes you got to speak to your circumstance. You got to say, I'm not going to fear. We will not fear. And then it's about what you know. It's about, it's not about what you know, but it's about who you know. So now you know that those who are with us, are more than those who are with him. He knows that he has the power of God working on his behalf. So no matter what he saw outside of the door that morning, he knew good and well that the power, the uh, the might that he had by being in relationship with the God Almighty definitely outnumbered what he saw outside. It was about who he knew and not about what he knew. It was about who he knew and, and, and not about about what he knew. He was able to school his young servant and say, hey, do not be afraid. He was able to speak with confidence. He was able to, to calm the situation because it was about who he knew. And, and how about us, y'all? When we run into, oh my God, when we run into situations where we can't see Hallelujah. We can't see our way out where it looks like we are just completely surrounded by the situation and by the circumstance. Can we call on God and say he is greater, greater in me than he that is in the world? Are we able to speak those words because we know who he is when it looks like we're surrounded? Can we say I am surrounded by him? Hallelujah. I hear the songwriter that said it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by him. That's how I fight my battles in my praise is because of who I know. I'm able to lift his name on high. I'm able to promote his name. I'm able to speak his name forth because I 
I know that he is a keeper. I know that he is a provider. I know that he is a way maker. Even when I don't see it happening, hallelujah, he is working it out on my behalf. That's how I got to these 41 years in life. Do y'all think I know every point every step that I was supposed to take, every point, every step that I was supposed to make. No, but God did. He made the ways out of no ways. He kept me protected. Hallelujah. He kept my family. Hallelujah. It was all him. So when we pull on the experience of what we know, what we know that he's able to do, it's more so about who we know and nothing about what we know. Hallelujah. We depend on him. We hold on to his unchanging hand because when I look back over my life and I think things over, hallelujah, I can truly say that I've been blessed overall. I've been blessed overall. Yes, there's been trials. Yes, there's been tribulations. There's been some things, but I know that he has been with me. As I taught last week, the Lord the Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. Don't you ever, ever forget that. Hallelujah. He is with us. Hallelujah. It is not about what we know. Hallelujah. Because if we dwelt on what we knew, my God, we would be crazy. We would be nuts. We would be over worried. We would want to take our own lives because we don't, we know we couldn't make it. We know we couldn't do it on our own, but it is who we know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hold on, hallelujah, to who we know. Woo, Holy Spirit, have your way, God. Oh, we need you in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. It is who we know. Oh, God, how we fight our battles, oh God, is through you. Strong is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Mighty is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We know him. We know him. And because of that, we never have to let our hearts be troubled. We don't have to let our hearts be troubled because we believe in God, the God of the creator, the creator of heaven, the creator of earth. Hallelujah. God Almighty, God Almighty, I pray that we meditate on who he is, who he is. He's, he's bigger than politics. Praise God, my sake. He's bigger than politics. He's bigger than COVID-19. Hallelujah. He, he's bigger than racial injustice. He, he's bigger than anything that we may be going through personally. He's bigger. Hallelujah. And if we know him, that's all we need. If we know him, that is all we need. Praise God. Praise God. It's not what we know, but it is who we know. Woo, God bless you all this, this evening. I pray that this was an encouragement unto your spirit, unto your soul, unto your emotions. I, I pray. Who? I just pray. Because times may get rougher. They may not. Whatever it looks like, that's the, that's the point I'm making. It doesn't matter what we see, but we know God. No matter how he decides to work things out and work things through, we have to know that we know him. And that all things will work together for our good. For our good. Praise God. I thank him for it. I thank him for it. God bless you, everyone. Good night. I will see you next week. And I pray you take care. Yeah, and make sure you visit those scriptures that I read for encouragement. Daniel 3, Job 13, 2 Kings uh, chapter 6. Amen. God bless you all. Share the message. Don't forget, okay? Love you. Have a good night.